Hey fellas, welcome to part four of ICM's 148 scale B26B build. In this exciting episode, I throw paint on it, and I'm really going to weather the heck out of this one. So uh, I'm showing you how I do my chipping and and uh, how I get the the uh, distressed and faded olive drab coat on it. And uh, normally, I, I like to paint the insignias and the lettering and all that stuff, but this is a 148 scale and the lettering was kind of small, so I thought I'd go ahead and use the decals for a lot of that stuff. So you get to see, for those of you guys that are building the plane, you get to see how the decals go down and, and uh, what worked for me as far as that goes. And the decals overall are, are pretty nice. They're uh, actually really good. But uh, we'll cover that, the decaling at the end, and uh, let's get on with the video. All right, so let's take a look at what we're gonna do. Now the owner really liked the look of the box art and so do I, so he wants it painted just like the box art. <clears throat> and I also found a plane online, I think it's just one photo of this plane. And it's kind of hard to tell the colors in the photo. There's been some kind of disagreement between a couple people online whether or not um, the nose area is black or green or whatever but according to the box art this is a dark green so I assume it's medium green which is what they use as camouflage on the B-17 and the rest of it's painted an olive drab and it's got uh, underside of natural metal finish so that's what I'm going with now I've seen some pictures where everything's all black and you know whatever but uh, this is what we're going with so what I've done and, and I'll flash up a picture real quick of what I'm talking about. So what I've done, and this is what I've done on my previous like B-17s and, and uh, the B-25s that I've done. Since it's olive drab, now I've got regular Tamiya olive drab, but I've mixed up to keep everything consistent different shades. So I've got 50% white and 50% olive drab. I've got 25% olive drab and the rest white. And then I've got 10% olive drab and the rest white. So I've got um, a dark, a medium, and a light. And I've also got my regular shade if I need it. So that's what I'm going to use with the base coat. So what I'll do is I'll start out with the medium color and I'll probably spray the entire portion with olive drab and then I'll come back and I'll do some I'll lighten up some areas because the olive drab apparently that they used back then got really worn and weathered and faded so then I'll come back with the 10 percent and then to add some darker areas I'll use this and if I even want to go darker in some places I can come back with the olive drab like maybe uh, you know it's not it's not painted on the underside, so maybe under the wings or something, darken it up a little bit more with a real diluted olive drab. Now for the medium green, <coughs> now my Tamiya mix calls for a one-to-one -one ratio of XF13, which is JA green and white. But what I'm doing is I'm just mixing this by <clears throat> as I go. So I'm just gonna use the JA green, it's pretty close. And then I'm gonna lighten it with some dark yellow. And that's one of the tricks with green that I found is sometimes when you lighten it with white, it, it does really wash it out. And I, would, I, I want it, although I lighten these with white, since it's going to be really faded, I just want a little bit different of a look with the, with the green. So I'm just lighting it with the yellow. I may come back and lighten it with white and hit some, you know, make some uh, real fine highlights. But we'll cover that whenever I get there. So what I've done, since the bottom's going to be natural metal finish, and I'm going to do a lot of chipping, and uh, I'm not going to do it with hairspray. I'm not going to do the typical uh, masking fluid like I've done before. Since this is a 148 scale, it's a little bit smaller. I just don't know that I'll be able to get um, uh, realistic enough chips with using the masking fluid that I got. So what I'm doing is as you can see here's the bottom and I basically haphazardly painted the bottom with the natural metal finish and came back with some darker shades 
and uh, highlight some areas, and I may play with that some more as I go. But I coated the, the entire thing with AK Aluminum, AK Extreme Metal Aluminum, which is, these are my favorite metalizers. And this is just directly over the primer. Now, I'm not clear coating this, I'm not saving my work, this is pretty durable stuff. Uh, so how I'm going to chip is I'm just going to take a toothpick once I get my base coats on and I'll come along and I'll show you this later, but I'll come along and I'll just chip away. And then I can also use Vallejo's airbrush thinner, which will slowly remove Tamiya paints, but it doesn't harm the metalizer finish. And I'll show you what I mean. Now I've already done the engine cowlings and I've got these glued up so uh, but I've went ahead and coated them spray or sprayed them and then I came back and I did some chipping I may do some more and I've worn away the front of the paint to kind of mimic what you saw in the picture with a, a q-tip and the Vallejo thinner so that's how I'm going to do the whole plane I'm just going to spray it and then come back and chip away and take away paint with uh, the Vallejo thinner and um, toothpicks. So I'm going to get started on putting my first coat of the 25% olive drab on and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like and uh, and then we'll start painting the rest. <sighs> okay so I've got the first coat down and this was my 25% olive drab with the rest being white. So it's a pretty light olive drab. And it's pretty splotchy. That's no big deal. This is just to get a color down. And now I'm going to add my colors on top of this, whether it's going to be light or dark. So now I'm going to go in with my light colors. And I'm going to hit a lot of these surfaces. I may come in here and do some uh, modeling inside of the panels. We're just going to have to see... Uh, what I feel like doing, but I'll show you how easy this is to scratch off. Now I I blew it kind of dry. It's still pretty smooth, but I really didn't wet this down and put a wet coat down. And you can see here how easily that scratches. Now if I take my Q-tip and I've got some airbrush thinner. Now this doesn't harm the metallic finish and my dog's going crazy so, so you can put this on here and it won't harm the finish but you can come in here and you can kind of wet this down and it will start to remove that and allows you to scratch it up easier as well so then you can come in here scratch it up and do all kinds of stuff with it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the really light shade, the 10%, and I may even lighten this up. Once I get the light color down, then I'll come back with a darker color, and then I may come back with a little more lighter color, and I'm just going to play with it and see what it looks like. But this is a good start, and... Of course, I've got my little uh, uh, masking piece down here. But I'm not real concerned with how it looks along, on, along the bottom and along here. I may mask that off and get a fine line. And I may just take my uh, Q-tip and kind of wipe that away. I don't know. But uh, I'm not real concerned. This is more like a rough, a rough end finish. And then we'll start getting into the fine details once I start to uh, figure out uh, what everything's going to look like. So I'll be back in a, in a few. All right, so I've got my lighter color down. And basically all I did was I went inside the panel lines and uh, did like a modeling technique like I would if I were black basing. And then I took the darker shade, the 50%, uh, 50-50, and I went along and I hit some panel lines. And I know it looks kind of uniform here. Well, I don't want that. But what I'm gonna do 
or so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these uh, variations in each panel. So I'm going to go around and just mask off certain panels, make some lighter, some darker, and, uh, and probably come along here and lighten up this area and just, just kind of play with the color and different panels and just give it a, a more patchwork appearance. A, appearance. I'm having a hard time talking. So I'm going to get on with that and I'll see you in a bit. All right, now let's take a look at what we've got. So I've went ahead and masked off different panels and you can see I've got some lighter, some darker, some lighter. And I kind of tried to match what was on here. Now, the color under this lighting looks a little washed out. So if I turn that off, see under this fluorescent lighting, and you, you can kind of see the change of the color under different lighting conditions. We'll turn this off. And it does look a little bit different. And one thing that uh, I think Clone Fox 80 had talked about or mentioned, uh, take it outside and look at, look at it under sunlight, natural light, under different lighting conditions, and it does change color. So uh, just kind of throwing that in there. Now I've already started chipping. Well, let me, let me show you what I've done here. So I've added the medium green nose medium green along the engine nacelles and along the bottom. And I wasn't too concerned about how fine of a line I got, because what I'm gonna do, if we remember what the picture looked like, it's real haphazard and a lot of the paint has fallen off and worn away down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come in here and I'm really going to wear this paint away with the Q-tip and really make it look ratty under here. So I wasn't real, that's one of the reasons I, I talked about, that I wasn't real concerned with, with how this looked underneath. So again, I'm using the Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. You don't want to use isopropyl alcohol because that'll actually remove the, the uh, natural metal finish, but this Vallejo stuff won't. So I'm gonna come down here and make this look ratty, take it off in a lot of spots. And I'm also gonna put other weathering over top of this. So again, I'm not real concerned with a nice neat finish. Cause like I said, we're weathering the heck out of this. Now, <clears throat> this stuff does have a tendency to creep if you put too much thinner on there. And what I mean by creep is it goes all over and then it kind of ruins the paintwork that you really don't want touched. So what I do is I dip it in the Vallejo thinner. Get that in the picture. I dip it in there and then I'll take the Q-tip and I'll just wipe it on my shirt so it's I don't have a bunch of paint running. And then I can come in here and take away a little bit and that way I don't have a bunch of thinner running everywhere. I just got it on the Q-tip. Now you do have to change out Q-tips a lot because it gets kind of it gets compacted with with paint. So this is all there is to it. And then I'll come come in with a little bit more thinner and I'll clean up the the paint from the natural metal part. And that's all there is to it. So what I plan on doing is working on these, the bottom of the nacelles and getting those ratted up and, and uh, some, take some of that paint away and make it look really chipped. And I'll probably come in with a toothpick. Now you wanna use a toothpick <clears throat> to do your chipping like I showed earlier, because if you use something metal, it's just gonna dig into the, the natural metal finish. And I'm not pressing too hard. And as you can see, I've got, I've started doing some chipping up here. I've also done some chipping along the nose. And the, the, uh, the paint up on the nose, the, the medium green paint, is a lot thinner 
than what it is up here. So it's gonna chip away a lot easier. In fact, I probably won't have to use too much, if any, of my airbrush thinner to chip this stuff away. It comes pretty much right off with a toothpick. So I can just come along here and make some chips. But if I do want to um, make some bigger chips, I can take one of my fine-tipped Q-tips, dip it in my Vallejo thinner, and then I can come along and it'll start taking away that paint. And it'll soften it up around it. And then I can come in here again with my, with my toothpick and start chipping away some more. Come back in with my Q-tip and clean it up a little bit. Widen it out, soften it up. And that is all there is to it. So I'm going to get to work with uh, doing some chipping. I'm really going to chip the heck out of it. I'm going to use this. Uh, get my stuff out of the way. I'll use my box art as kind of a reference to start chipping away at different areas. Once I get that done, <clears throat> then I'm going to mask off and I'll paint the red the red uh, tips of the wings, the red tip of the rudder, and uh, we'll go through all that, but uh, that's just gonna be a matter of masking and painting and, and shading. So uh, that's basically all there is to it. And uh, I'll see you. All right, fellas, I've got my base coating done, and just before I put clear coat on it, I thought I'd show you where we're at. I think we're pretty close to what the, uh, the picture looks like. At least we're we're in the ballpark, I think, with how dirty and ratty it is. Um, I painted the decals for the looks like the walkways, and then after I painted them, I just put a light coat, and then I came in here and scratched them up where they were where I already had the paint scratched, and then I painted the tail letter, the U.S. Air Force on the bottom. Now on the picture, it doesn't show that there's a U.S. Air Force up here. And the instructions aren't really clear. I've seen some of these without the U.S. Air Force on top. The picture doesn't have it, so that's what we're going with. <clears throat> now, I'm still going to have to do some detail painting like the, I assume this is some kind of an antenna. I'll just hand paint that a uh, dark black or a <laughs> light black, maybe a, a NATO black or something. But uh, this is what she looks like before we get clear coat on it. And now the smaller letters and numbers, I am going to use the decal and, and the uh, stars and bars. I'm going to use the decals. I'm going to have to weather them up because they're nice, bright, and shiny. They aren't going to go with the plane. I just think that's going to be a little bit easier than um, trying to mask and paint those. Because my Cricut isn't able to cut out letters really small very well. So we're just using the, the decals. So that's what she looks like. I'm going to get some clear coat on it. And uh, put the decals on. And after that we'll be weathering. Alright guys. <coughs> I'm going to put some decals on. Now I normally don't show this on my channel for a couple reasons. One is I'm not really that good at decaling and probably shouldn't be showing you how horrible I am at it. And two, it's just kind of <laughs> boring and I hate decals. So, um, but I'm going to show this because I think this is probably somewhat of a, a kit review for a lot of you guys that are going to be building this kit. So I thought, you know, this would be a good opportunity to... to uh, let you see how the decals are. Now I tried putting the decals on the instrument panel and they kind of fell apart. I, I don't know. I really wasn't quite sure about them. Uh, they did seem pretty thin and I've already done the propellers and these have had a chance to dry. I didn't use any uh, micro set. I just used micro saw, I think. Yeah, micro saw, which is the red stuff. And they, I mean, it's not like a, they had to go over any panel lines here. So 
Not really sure about how that's going to go, but these seem to be seem to went down pretty well, and there's very little carrier film. So hopefully these will go down just as nicely. Now, I've got my warm water over here. And let's see where I need to put this bad boy. It looks like it goes right here. So I'm just putting some water. Now I do have a, a clear coat on here which is uh, Future or Pledge Floor Clear, Care, Shine, whatever. Uh, now there's some debate on whether you need a clear coat and I don't think the clear coat stops silvering. <laughs> I think that's kind of a misconception. Um, what causes silvering is all the lumps and bumps and you can either have shiny lumps and bumps or you can have flat lumps and bumps. So I don't really think the clear coat has anything to, or the uh, gloss coat has anything to do with that. The reason I put a gloss coat down in my opinion it uh, the decals adhere better to a gloss coat and this is my opinion only than they do a flat coat and you know, cuz I've had some experience with putting them on flat uh, decals on a flat coat and the decals not adhering properly now I'm not using any micro set which is the blue stuff, which I think is to soften the decals, but I don't really know that it does anything, to be quite honest with you. And Let's see where we're at. Okay, now I'm taking my Q-tip, and you, you want to wet your Q-tip. That might be a little too wet. So we'll just see how this does. I mean, they go on nice. I can't argue with that. Now, a lot of times what I'll do, especially with Tamiya decals, is I'll just lift the decal up with my tweezers. And you can't do that with these because <laughs> they're so thin, they just fold over on, each, on themselves. And once, they, once these fold over, they're kind of lost. It's a lost cause. I mean, I've had decals fold over on themselves before, and you can you can usually put them back in the water, and they'll they'll separate, and you can unfold them, but not with these. <laughs> once they're once they fold on each other, sticky side together, you're you're not getting these apart. Now, it doesn't look, there's just very, very little carrier film, which is really nice. And a lot of times you get these decals and they're just, <laughs> they got like half the decals carrier film, but, you know, there's just a very, very thin edge, so. Just trying to get the bubbles out of it. It looks like it's settling down in the cracks or the uh now these panel lines on this plane aren't very deep in fact i don't even know that a wash will stick in yeah it might stick in some of them but i don't even know if i'll do a wash we'll see so yeah that actually looks pretty good I'm actually pretty happy with that. I know that I got it down far enough. I don't like... <laughs> Uh-oh. Let's wet this and see if we can move it. Because I don't like the placement on that. It just needs to come down just a bit. Now... Let's see if we can move this. These, the other ones I had, they, it's almost like they stuck to the surface so well. Once you get them down, 
and I really hammered this one down so Let's see if we can move it it's just really hard to tell where this one's supposed to go I don't know that they've got their... their lines lined up. I don't think their lines on the the instruction sheet match up to the lines on the plane, to be honest with you. That looks pretty good, though. A little better so I was able to move it and there's my dog barking at UPS guy probably all right let's see if I can redo this so this is looking pretty good but with decals you don't really know until they till they set up and dry how they how they are but these are thin they appear to be like they're gonna settle down in the panel lines really well and there's very little carrier film and it was durable enough that I could move it once I hammered it down improperly and there might be a few air bubbles in there but we can pop those once it dries and All right. Now I am going to have to come back and weather these to match the rest of the plane. So I'm going to get on with decaling. There's kind of a look at, at how they are. I'm, they're actually pretty decent. All right. I said I'd throw up a bunch of pictures, but instead we're just going to, I'm going to talk over the, talk about this, about the decals. And overall, I'm really happy with them. They're pretty thin. They go down pretty nice. Now, one issue that I had was this emblem right here. Now, because the nose section wasn't, there's a little bit of step here. Uh, it had some, and there's a, obviously a, a contour with a rounded nose uh, that posed a little bit of issue. It also, according to the instructions, goes right here along this little nub that sticks out. So there's a, a lot to work around with this decal. So basically what I did is I put it down and I smoothed out what I could. There was a little bit of wrinkle right here where it was trying to conform. And I took a, a hair dryer on high heat and I heated it up, which real softens it. So that's what I, I like to do with decals that uh, are, are around surfaces like this is I'll heat it up with a hair dryer, then come back with a wet Q-tip and smooth it out and, and make it conform. And that seems to work the best, in my opinion, for most decals. And uh, then I put some uh, Microsol on there. Now, when I talk about, if you look at these, they're all sunk down pretty well. Now, I did go through with an X-Acto blade and run an X-Acto blade along the panel lines and then hit them again with um, Solvacet. And this one had a little bit of work, had some air bubbles I had to pop, and had to go over it a few times with solve set. So what I found with these decals, with this kit, this really didn't do anything. <laughs> I had to come back with solve set, and that really hammered them down. When I put the microsol on them, there was, it didn't really make them settle that I could tell. And it didn't it didn't like crinkle up like you normally see when the when the uh, decal setting solution reacts with the with the decal. But when I put Solvacet on there, it really wrinkled up and they really sucked down and settled down. So my suggestion is, you know, you can start with Microsol. I, I really don't think it did anything. But if you really want to hammer them down, Solvacet's the way to go. So overall, they look pretty good. I uh, Found a couple little spots where there was some silvering, but I took an X-Acto blade and made some real small incisions 
like a uh, skilled surgeon. And then put my solva set on there, and that seems to have taken care of them. So, I think we're looking pretty good. Now, I also hand-painted the, the antenna and the guns. <clears throat> so, I am uh, pretty much good to go. Now, I'm going to put a clear coat over it. I may put a wash on it. I don't think wash is going to sit in these real shallow panel lines. But it is, I think it will give me a, a different tone and, and, and make the plane look a little more dirty. Then I'll put a flat coat on it. And then I'll start with my oil paints. So that is all there is for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it, you've, it's uh, helped you out. I don't know that I'm going to do a weathering video on this one. I think I'm just going to take my time and play with it. So the next video, you will get to see the finished model. And uh, uh, thanks for watching.